Okay, so let's begin. Yeah. So the subject matter what we're learning about right now is every morning at davening before the Shema, we describe in detail the angels, the Malachim. And there's two categories. There's the Serafim and there's the Eifanim. Now, everything comes in paradox. So the Serafim are higher level. They're the intellectual Malachim. They understand. And the Eifanim, Eifanim means a wheel. He's going to explain in a minute. It turns and turns and turns. The highest HaKadosh and Eifanim, that's one general category. You know the two highest is one level, Eifanim is another. But Eifanim is the lower one. Highest is like in the world of Yitzira, and Eifanim is the lowest world. Bottom line is that these Malachim are not intellectual, not that they understand Hashem, but you know, the paradox is that they have a deeper connection. They have a deeper connection. Their bittel is greater. And he gave an example in the previous us as follows. The example is of a Talmud, a disciple. So he's a very good disciple and he appreciates his master's teachings and wisdom and he's in awe of his master. Why is he in awe of his master? Because he understands and appreciates the depth of his teachings. So there's a bittel there. And of course, he wants to be close to him and get more teachings and more teachings. He appreciates it and, and is in awe of it. And every teaching that he hears, here's the point, friends, is something that, wow, it's a, it's a wow, eureka moment he never heard before. But then when the teacher teaches it, he understands it and it blows him away. And then there's a situation where the teacher teaches something that it's completely beyond him. All he knows is that it's a, it's a profound teaching. He, he, he's, he knows that. He cannot grasp it. It's totally beyond him. So then the student's appreciation, if you like, or bitl, or awe, or wow, is at a completely different level. Dafka, because he didn't understand. Now, this wow is because he understood the previous classes or the previous years whatever it was that the teacher was teaching and because of that when the teacher reveals something that is not just beyond but beyond beyond him then he's completely in awe and here's the point till now when you're asked the, the student describe your teacher you could describe him He's a great intellectual, he's these fantastic ideas, and he's an original thinker. You have all kinds of descriptions to describe his teacher. The teaching of the teachings of the teacher. But when he heard this, that's totally beyond, all he can say is beyond me. I, he has no words or description to describe what he just heard because he, he can't grasp it. So all he can say is it's beyond. And that's the difference between the Srofim and the Efanim. The Srofim. They understand, and they're getting every day, we're going to learn more details, quite amazing, of the nature of the Serafim, the Maila, every day revelation, and the Seraph means burnt up. They're blown away every single day, and they scream, Kodesh, 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 Hashem is beyond us, but Maima said, beyond, but we have an appreciation. That's the word Kodesh with the verb, without going to that again. But they... I found him are called the highest Hakodesh, not Kodesh, but Kodesh. Again, without going to the distinction, Kodesh, completely beyond. The Fanim, their bittle is greater. So let's let's go a little bit further now. And I say, because the Fanim appreciate how totally beyond the master is. In other words, technically, as it were, what the Ifanim are connecting to is the Eirin Sof. The Srofim connect to Atzilis. And Bemis even, Srofim Oindim Imaloi. This is the Srofim stand above him. Who's the him? This is from the vision of, of Yechesko, Yeshaya. They saw the heavens open up and they saw the angels. That's all this comes from. So the Srofim stand above him. Who's the him? They stand above him. Him is Atzilus, so they're connecting to beyond Atzilus. But one level beyond Atzilus, it's still connected. 
but they found him pure in self, totally beyond. Here they let's go for the detail. I say, page of Lamad Zion, I used in the bit lay found him and got a bit less of him. So the, the greatness, the advantage of the beetle, of the surrender. Ask a simple question to everybody. Why is beetle a, a mile? Anybody? Why is beetle a mile? The fact is, uh, dear friends, that beetle being a mile is is only in Chabad. If you go in other places, Godel, that's a mile. I don't know if you saw this funny video going around. It's, it's a viral video in England. Someone snapped it. I mean, it, it's not Lush and Horror, there's no names, and it's a video. So very, it's very funny if you want to see it. But this guy's outside of Shul. And so, someone, there's, there's been some, you can pick up what happened. That somebody was not treated respectfully as he thought he should be by somebody else. Now, a third person, like, says something to him. Like, what are you getting so out of bend for? And the guy that was offended says, do you know who I am? I'm a goggle. Literally, this has happened last week in England somewhere. <laughs> and the conversation continues. It gets very ugly. It's comical. It's very funny. So I'm asking you a question. Uh, yeah, Godel, being a big person, a big scholar, and a big chassid, that, that's, that's obviously a virtue. So Anthony, why is Bittl a virtue? Okay, uh, our McGill student is here. You're talking about Bittl and surrender. Yes, well, well, why is that? Self-expression, that's a virtue. Being somebody is a virtue, surely. And we're not negating that either, mind you. So what's the virtue of Bittl in a word? Anybody? <laughs> Silence. Such Bittl, no one can even speak. No, say something, no? Uh, in the face of, of something which is completely beyond us, it makes space within ourselves to for that essence. The only place where God can come is where you let him in. All right. So you say, good. So what's the mile of Bittl? Putting self aside, as it were. And we have to understand what that means. Uh, that makes room for Hashem. Like in every relationship. You want to connect to somebody else. You have to make space for them in your, in your world, in your heart, in your mind. And ask the simple question, what do you want? What do you like? And then provide it. Then you're connecting to them. So bittle is critical. If it's not about a relationship, you don't need bittle. If it's about you becoming a big person, then then fine, God, that's the virtue. It's about me getting Olam Haba, then you don't need bittle. On the contrary, you know, the big operating word is become bigger, 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 bigger. Fine. But if it's about a relationship with God... Then, then it's about Bittle. Okay, so, yeah. Now, I just want to say in brackets, Bittle doesn't mean, oh, so I disappear, I have no opinion, I have nothing to contribute. The opposite is true. When there's true Bittle, maybe someone can answer this question, paradox. Because you would think if Bittl means, okay, surrender, surrender, make place for you. So I'm out of the picture, whatever you want. You know, robot, soldier, servant, slave. So there's no me. My, my needs don't count. And my personality doesn't count. And my opinion doesn't count. Is that what I'm saying? No, I'm suggesting now the opposite is true. That with this Bittl, true Bittl, that's when I'm really expressive. No? Can someone offer a re an explanation for that? The true bit does not mean I disappear. Uh, on the contrary, I become really expressive and developed and powerful and grow. Is that a level of expression of my true self? Okay. Good. Let's say some more suggestions. 
Shalom, what's up, sir? Who else is there? Is it? Here we go. I prefer to You're listen. Yeah, okay. I'm making space for you, Rabbi New. Ah. <laughs> At that point, you're channeling the infinite. That uh, the the more you get your own limitations and personality out of the way, the more you're expressive of something universal and essential. Sounds wonderful, but it doesn't sound like it's you. So it's universal. But where it's are you? The deepest you. So you're saying the deepest you is not you. Yeah. yeah on the table, no? There's three really ten copies. Yeah, had a bunch, by the way. So no, look on the pile. The, look on the pile. The, it, there's a flat pile. Okay, I hear you. Uh, anybody else wants to say something? Pass. Too early, too early in the morning. So friends, okay, what, what, what you're all saying is all good, but let's add the following. Let's remember the song. What's the message of it? No, not something else. So it's not that, it's not that. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to make, shall make more copies. And that's a good thing, people taking it. Namely, in a word, You gave me talents. They're not mine. And why are they here? They're here to serve you. So therefore, I have no excuse not to develop every resource and talent that I have. From Haderes Emuna to Tehilav Tiferes, Lachayilomim. On the contrary, because if my talents are yours, that's the true bitl. Remember what we were learning. This was a marshal for Yehudi Elon Yehudi Tata. The lower level of bitl is I'm something. That's a starting point. But I'm surrendered to you. Make space for you. That's the lower bitl. But I, the starting point is I'm a something. The higher bitl is every talent I have is not thanks to me. I just, it's all a gift. Those talents are yours. The chathilah. To begin with. So therefore, why did you give them to me? Because you want me to serve you with them. You want to connect. Or let's actually make it more accurate. Because you want to be a part of my life in that talent as well. You want me to invite you into that talent which you gave me. So that you can be part of it. So then, such a person, friends. This is a chosid. A chassid is the most original, creative, confident, every restless in the sense that if there's an ability he has and a talent he has, there's no right not to use it. It's not mine. A talent to make. Huh? Yeah, he's the ultimate example of that. Right. Sure. But this is what this is what the Rebbe inspires in all of us. And this is really our generation. Our generation is, is now is the time to use every... Re now, let me put it to you this way. For seven, six generations, for six generations, we were banged into our head. Abish is the only reality. Who are you? Bittle. Okay, we've got the message. So now the final message is, who, who, you? It's Taka, not you. The you is all a gift. So now it's time to use it all. Use it all selflessly and joyously and every talent. Every talent. And it's not just the person himself, but the world itself as well. That's why till the Rebbe, we shied away from a lot of what the world has to offer. I mean, it's too dangerous and, and it, it was a temptation. And go there, the Rebbe says there, and use it. What do you think it's there for? It's all him. Technology, everything, it's all in the end for one purpose, to reveal godliness in the world and make the world a better place and a home for Hashem. Don't be afraid. Go there. Tread waters that no one ever tread. Go to places no one dreamed of going. The seventh generation is the Kirch to do all of this because of the six generations of teaching that the world itself, per se, is nothing. What are you afraid of? 
Then it becomes everything because it's him. Nothing independent, everything expression of him. So the M is a beetle. This is Yichud Yilah. This is, Yichud, this is living Yichud Yilah and Yichud Yitata. The M is a beetle is not surrender, but self-expression. Because th that self is you. The starting point is you here in Yichud Yilah. At Deres Muna L'chai Yilamim, the first tight was, remember? I told you the story, it's just my personal thing. Over the years, as I heard the name again and again, it's a, Rabbi Glick was fabranging. First level was you, you have a chush, use it. Gvaldige demand also. Second level is l'chai lomim. The chush is not yours. It is, of course. And you see this, friend. I mean, again, it's just a pity you don't see real chassidim. I mean, but you do. There are. Shouldn't say there aren't. Rabbi Yomin was just here this past week. Rabbi Yomin Zilbush. He's in my house. You get to see the guy close up. God bless him. On one hand, there's a bitle. It's not a contradiction. He's a bitle digger chassid and doesn't rest. And squeezes every chush that he has, he gives and talks and brings and raises. What's he raising money for? You know where he raises money? The guys in Mashpi and Dinter de Semis. He doesn't have to raise money, it's not for his salary. He has a salary finished. Because by Fabreng, he wants a mental told him, Binyamin, the mental foot of us. What's by Fabreng? Binyamin, Ben Azmanim. He should travel the world and Clive Geld for whatever, Heichel Manach. Now, was a mental saw in him that you, 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 you'd be effective. You can do that. You're not just my spear. You can raise money. So go do it. That's it. Picks up Pesach out of Pesach and leaves and travels. Not easy for him. So Hinde, let's continue now. And oh, he's, hey, So the advantage of the bit of the Ifanim over the bit of the Srafim. The bit of the Ifanim is not because they understand and appreciate the master as it were. Again, it's the marshal of the it's I thought long and hard, not long and hard enough, but long and hard about this. And maybe one day we'll we'll talk about it. But the Moshele gave before is not two Talmidim, it's one Talmud. It's one Talmud. So exactly what's the dog of the Ifanim? They do have the appreciation of the Srafim on some level. It's sorry, Fiyun and Adichus, but we're going to the new ones now. It's not so. For the general idea, and that is, so therefore the Bitla of the Ifanim is not Misad HaSag, but the Haru Bitla, it's a true Bitla. So Kosha, this is all connected. They're called wheels and they rotate. Galgalim, they rotate. What, is, what does rotation mean? It's going to explain how the symbolism. It's all Ruchni, it's not Gashmis. All of these, these imageries that Heskel saw and Yeshaya saw, they describe it in physical terms because we have no other language. But it's all Ruchnis. So you have to try and think of it conceptually, not visually, but to whatever degree we're able to do that. The dogma so eagle, so just like a circle, a rotating, a rotating circle. Shahiluchum is galgal but even so it rotates, and what happens? Shaelian Shabayirid Lamata, the top goes down, Fatah Shabayla and the bottom goes up, and so it continues to rotate. Till you can't identify this is high, this is low. There's no high, there's no low. In the circle, there's no high point, there's no low. A rotating, a rotating wheel. There's no high, there's no low. Because why? It's always changing. It's rotating. Yeah, it's always changing. So what does this mean in And This is why the Nevi'im described the Yifanim with the word Yifanim. 
The metaphor here is the fetus in the womb. It's a circle. Literally, the, the head is between the knees. And all, you don't see the head, so it's concealed in the knees. That's what the fetus is. He said the Homayim began with that. Class, great class. Three within three. Chabad within Chagas and Chagas within Nehi. So, so the, what's Nehi? Nehi are the most external, the external ex, uh, lowest levels of the, of the nefesh, just their song, their behavior. So the avoid is now it's not just here's the point here, friends. They're not only the Yafanim and not simply those three lower spheres, Nihi. No, there is Chabad, and there is Chagas, the higher faculties, but it's all wrapped up in one rotating. Uh, uh, Dynamic. Commercial have lad like the feet, the shadow should be built up that the head is between the knees. She be sgalus, the kerak prinis ne hisha, but you look at the all you see is the knees, built up. But look closer, you see the head is in between. Well, yes, but the behel and gum prinis hagas for chabad, shaboy, roishi, in a concealed latent way, there's also the emotions and the intellect. It's all present. So therefore, he's saying we're not just talking. The avid of the ifanim is not. Mice of pearl, devoid of any intellect and devoid of any emotion. There is intellect and emotion, but what? It's all subsumed in the nihi, in the knees, as it were, bent. Question, just reminder, what did we learn before? Physical imagery, the human being born, you and I, that reflects also this bitl equals circular. A circular shape. In in life, we see this a spontaneous response when a person expresses bitl. What does he do? Kfifas how do she bends the knee? It bends the head. That's how the morning begins. Meidani, Meidani begins with al derech. You put our hands together. We bow our head. It's like it's the fetus position. We're now born from there, Maidani. Reborn. Go to the mikveh, that's the womb. Come out. Every day is a new day. I told you many times a story. The Rebbe said that his, well, without the whole story again, but the Rebbe's favorite tefillah is Maidani. Very simply, it's a new day. What was yesterday is yesterday. It's a new creation, a new day, a new opportunity. We're reborn. We're reborn every day. So, our votes, but the point is that it's not only that what, that they found them are only the lowest levels, just, just a song, a, sing, a singer, but there's heart and there's emotion, but it's within. It's like a circle in square brackets now, commercial, but Pashtos. Like we see that the head is between the knees, that by the legs, that's where the head is. Come on, you go like a circle. What's the point of the circle? You can't identify. There's no top, there's no bottom. Shahilov was top, now it's bottom, bottom, now top, and this endless cycle, rotation. Shahilov is galgali, you see, this is in the matter. So the higher goes lower, valleys are tachten a mile, and the lower goes higher. High no shin and high da tachten meaning. What happens is that the faculty of a da of surrender, which is the lowest part of me, I surrender. You're in charge. The oil of the mile and clears begilly that ascends higher than the level of the head. And then the faculties of of emotion and intellect, which is the upper faculties of the person, they descend, they become the lower, and this endless, this endless perennial, not perennial, but this endless rotation. On the other hand, we just said now that what? 
that what happens is that the intellect descends and what happens uppermost is the lower faculties. Moreover, even it's only when Chabad descends and becomes concealed, as it were, in the he. And the he again is the faculties of surrender and devotion, bottom line devotion. That's when the true bitl is, right? The bitl is not because of his he understands. Nimza, important point now. And we have to explain, okay? Shahidid the Chabad liyos behel and wa ambites aliyah. When the Chabad descends and is concealed, that's the true aliyah. So we we're addressing the question we asked talked about last week. Not that there's no understanding. Not that there's no understanding. Again, the example I gave before of the, of the disciple. We said there's two levels, right? But the teacher is teaching these incredible ideas that blows them away each time. That's the Srafim. But he understands it and it blows them away. And such a disciple can describe his teacher to others. The nature of his intellect and his mind and it's beyond him, but this description. And then one day, the teacher reveals now something radically beyond. Radically beyond, but you can't even grasp. You can't even grasp. So here, it's just complete wow. He has no description even to describe what this is. But this comes after because he did have all of this understanding that he had appreciated from his master till now. As opposed to someone who comes into lecture, has no idea about anything, didn't understand anything, and he doesn't, he doesn't go out with a wow. He just goes out and clueless. There's no bitl. There's no real bitl. If, if you, a person comes into the lecture and his, his, his world is not the world of, 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 of learning at all. There's no relationship with the teacher before. He came to lecture, didn't get a word. He comes out there blown away. He comes out there. True, he can't say, can you describe what happened? He can't say anything. He's also silent, but not a silent of bitl. It's just not by, beyond me. You follow? There's no wow, no bitl. If there is, it's the most, ex just, yeah, it's beyond my world. It's only the one that has a shyness. And that's there you find him. There is the seichel there. There is a heart and there is intellect and there is an, a relationship already, a connection. And then when there's a revelation of that, which is totally beyond that, that engenders the bitl, the true bitl. In other words, at the end of the day, the, in the example of the disciple of the Talmud, his seichel makes him appreciate the bittle. There's an appreciation of that bittle. He understood everything till now. Now it's totally beyond. The Chabad is there. That's, that's what he means. You know, the Chabad is yoyed lamata. It's a disciple. The intellect descends down means that the intellect bows and surrenders to the truth of the erin self that's beyond all description and grasp. Then it says, when you, when, you, when, you, when you think about this long and hard, what does this mean? Again, to explain to a McGill student who has no agenda, just what are you talking about? Just explain to me clearly what you're talking about. It's, I want to, I'm putting this question out to you. I want you to think about it between now and tomorrow. How should the question? Okay, we have a good deal that you'll think about this between today and tomorrow. We say the Srofim have an understanding. What are they understanding? In simple, what are they understanding? And what are they finding? Not understanding because it's beyond. What are we talking about? Godliness. It's not an answer. Understand godliness. No, no geographical answers. Low levels, high levels. What, 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 substance. What are we talking about? What? What's the statement? Though? What are we talking about? Of course, the answer we're talking about the Abishta. So let's think. 
outside, you know, again, it's such a good thing to have the McGill student. Like you talk all these words, like explain it to me. I want to know. Okay, there's God, there's a God. Okay, but now proceed from there. You don't have to prove there's a God. I'm accepting that. I'm not going to challenge you on that. There's a God, and I keep on talking. These angels understand, don't well, and understand what exactly? There is a God. What does it mean to understand there is a God? This is the question I'm asking. What are they understanding? And what are the Ephanim understanding that we not understand? I wonder if the Ephanim have the same question for us. What does it mean that the humans don't understand the Ebershtim? You, you mean the Serafim? The Ephanim don't have that. Sorry, the Ephanim, I'm sorry. No, the Serafim. The Ephanim don't have an understanding. Why? What does that mean they don't? But we say we do now. We just said now that there's the Seichel. The Seichel go cycle, the seichel descends, and then there lies the beetle. We're not negating seichel here. It's the fetus. There is seichel, and there is midas, and the whole imagery of the, of the, of the, of the rotating circle. Above, low, above, low, above, low. So there is the emergence of seichel, and it surrenders. What does all this mean? Okay. I've deliberately not offering any possible explanation. First of all, I have to think more about it myself. And second, I want you to think. I've heard of it. We're talking the abstractions. It's so easy to get lost in levels, then words, I find himself. What are we talking about? 